it snow, the snow doesn't melt off very, very readily, so the flat plate has the advantage uh, on that score. But uh, with these, you can actually uh, get, and uh, in, in some applications, actually uh, heat up um, hot water, and they use it in uh, air conditioning systems uh, with really hot water with the evacuated tubes. But you don't need that for um, residential warnings. Uh, I just thought I'd show you some houses here that have used uh, uh, solar panels. 1976 in uh, north of Toronto. And here are the uh, solar panels. At the time, there weren't any uh, Canadian manufacturers, so they imported these from uh, Israel. And uh, they, uh, they're, they're mounted roughly at, uh, I think, around 50 degrees or so to the horizontal. And uh, this was the uh, Saskatchewan Conservation House in Regina, 1977. And it used the uh, evacuated tube uh, collectors there. And uh, it was a, uh, uh, about 220 square feet of panels here for that. And uh, they were worried about snow uh, getting onto the panels here, and that's the reason they have this, this overhang on here. They thought that would help a bit in terms of... Uh, but when the wind was blowing, the snow would, wouldn't acknowledge this. <laughs> it uh, was a problem. Um, on that conservation house, they had uh, the collectors had a 70 degree uh, angle of, of tilt, and uh, and then they also were <coughs> had these massive solar windows here that were picking up heat uh, during the uh, during the, the day just from the south facing windows. And this this building is doing that as well, it has the south facing window and. Uh, one advance on the house is that it, they've incorporated thermal mass here in the floor. There are some one inch and a quarter thick uh, concrete tiles that absorb heat during the day and then uh, release it at night. And uh, it allows the, uh, the uh, building not to overheat during the day. And in the summertime this will work as well. It'll prevent the building getting too warm uh, during the day. And again, this is uh, um, our house in, uh, in Saskatoon. And uh, it's very important to try to get as good a uh, solar exposure as you can. Like th this is totally ideal here. Like the nearest trees are 100 yards away. And uh, for most of the winter, there's snow in the parking lot here that reflects off the ground and uh, increases the output from the, uh, from the solar panels. Uh, I have a problem actually on the west side of my house. The, neighbor, the trees on my neighbor's lot here, you can see here they're growing over and in the late afternoon they block some of the, uh, of the sunshine. And I, I checked with the city, you're allowed to cut your neighbor's tree right to the property line <laughs> to, to address that. Uh, another approach was taken with the Factor 9 home in Regina, and here they actually mounted the solar panels uh, vertically, and uh, they, they are in this, this band uh, right here, and the homeowner uh, wanted to uh, just have them mounted vertically, and that's, that's what he got. And then the, up here, there, there are mostly windows up here, and uh, mostly windows uh, in that, that band. So it looks here like a, uh, a curtain wall system, as they, they say on, on a large panel. What does that do to the collection of the solar energy that's going to go? Yeah, it, it, uh, the, the optimum angle for year-round collection is uh, 
roughly your latitude angle, and Regina is at latitude 50. But um, in the, in the winter time, you get snow on the ground, which and the reflection off that uh, helps here. And um, for this house as well, we have vertical mounting of the, uh, the panels on the. Uh, and uh, as it turns out, there's very little penalty actually for for a house uh, by going, you know, not to the. Uh, and the only thing it it it, uh, it might be a problem if, for example, you were. Uh, trying to heat a swimming pool or something in the summertime. And there you'd want the, the panels to be pointing you know, up, at the, up at the higher angle. On uh, December 21st, the, the sun angle is quite low. It's, uh, it's only uh, four, about 14 degrees above the horizon. So the sun is coming in like, like this. And on uh, June 21st, it's at, uh, the sun is way up here at 61 degrees. And uh, so the, uh, the angles are that, that way. And here you can just see uh, the, the solar panels were placed in this. Uh, in fact, the homeowner actually, he bought the uh, absorber plates, which are... Uh, you know, this part here, the, the copper and the copper tubes and that. And then he, uh, he, put the, uh, he put the glazing in himself. Uh, one thing to do if you want to do that, be very careful. Uh, he bought some uh, dual glazed sealed units here. And uh, the, the heat uh, cracked. The, uh, so it, it's not... Your standard windows that are made for houses are not meant to be inside of solar collectors because it, it can get very, very hot in there. And I don't know precisely what happened, but I think what may have happened, the, the power might have gone off and uh, no heat was being extracted from the collector. And they, they can get well over 100 degrees Celsius inside the panel. So. Um, this is a... Uh, another building in the prairies here in Edmonton and here the solar heating panels are mounted vertically uh, again here and uh, they've had problems with these panels they're made actually in uh, in Belgium and uh, they tried to run just straight water through these panels in the winter and then drain them back at night and they actually uh, had some water hang up in one of the panels and it burst one of the panels and uh, they were not happy. So now I think they've actually added some antifreeze to the drain back solution. So uh, although the concept is very, very simple, one can say, well, like this, there's a lot of subtle things that, you know, you want something to be very, very reliable and very uh, durable. And uh, it's always nice. There's a great old saying that uh, the early bird gets the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. You know, if you can let other people do the innovation and, and, uh, and then here's the, uh, the very eco home. It's a, uh, it's uh, solar thermal panels are here and then there's uh, some here as well. And these panels here are the solar electric ones for the, uh, for the home. And uh, again, on the uh, conservation side, it has, uh, you know, the low flow shower has the uh, drain water heat exchanger. Uh, the, you know, the other, other features that I mentioned, you know, to reduce the load in the first place. And, uh, Doing the right things that way. And so, just in conclusion, we, we, we say conservation uh, first and then uh, use the solar panels to uh, supply the reduced load. And I'm uh, just thinking there's one other, uh, um, design factor if you have a new house, 
uh, try to put the water heating equipment as close as possible to the, to the end uses in the home. And, uh, uh, and that way you don't have a lot of water sitting in the pipes uh, you know, between the heating equipment and the end uses. And uh, it's, uh, it's not always possible to do that, but uh, uh, if, all of your, uh, if all of your equipment is close as possible to the end uses, then you don't have a lot of empty water sitting in the pipes. I have seen a house, houses now that actually have a little pump system where <clears throat> when you walk into the bathroom, a pump starts up and it pumps hot water from the tank right to your end uses. And, uh, you know, that can, can be done. Uh, most big commercial buildings, hotels and that, uses pumps to pump the hot water around. But again, that's another energy use and another something that might go wrong over time. So, uh, always try to, uh, you know, to get it as uh, as simple as you can uh, for that. And uh, so th those are, are the conclusions. And again, I just say, uh, just put it in perspective, your average home, like this is a tenth of a watt of electricity. Your average home uses about 500 watts of electricity, or of energy uh, equivalent for this. And then uh, you know, with some fairly cost-effective devices, uh, you, like the drain water heat exchanger, you 